Attention, all ready or not gamers, Void Interactive is in big danger and they need your help recording the gameplay and editing the trailer. To do this, all they're going to need is your credit card number, three digits on the back and the expiration date. And with your help, we can get the trailer and jump the hype train. Listen guys, I have no idea as to when the trailer or game is going to come out. The developers have stopped giving estimates in October, so it could be this month, it could be next year, I have no idea. The devs are being so goddamn stingy about it that it just frustrates me. But if you guys keep asking for more content, I will get you more content. So before we get into the Reddit, a couple things. I have some news that I got off of the Discord. If anyone remembers Royans, I'm not sure if that's how you say his name, but he started talking in the Discord chat. This was kind of jarring because I hardly ever see him talk in the chat. I think the last time that I saw him was back in September of this year, but there he was just chatting away. We asked him for a leak and he said, leaky leak and posted a picture of what looks like numbers and letters pc users usually know what this means but to those that don't this is 139.81 frames per second or fps and the 715 millisecond or ping somebody had jokingly asked if easy street's ping was over 9000 and to please keep his laggy ass in the trailer because he wants to see him teleporting around royans replies with lol it's not that bad considering ease has around 200 to 250 ping if i remember correctly easy street lives in the u.s florida to be exact and the main branch of the devs are based in new zealand so that's 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 actually not too bad you know i, I gotta say Wayne's later explained that the pick was a part of a mission in red or not running on the specs of an i7 6700k and a 1070 i later said i'm guessing you're making it good for lower powered pcs Royans replies with yep for sure that screenshot was taken on epic settings in an actual level too some levels expect lower fps obviously some higher but you should be able to get your desired frames fairly easily so low, medium, high, epic, and there is cinematic as well. My friend has a rubbish PC and he couldn't even load into Ron six months ago. Now he gets a stable 30 to 40. He was the basis for my optimization and it skyrocketed from there. I later tried to press him on this by saying, does that friend have specs? And the developer replies with, I would share, but the minimum and recommended specs will be confirmed soon. Dang, nam it. Well, at least it was an interesting conversation and I got to see him again. But another big surprise is seeing Grunter. I don't think I've ever seen him talk in the Discord before. It kind of gave me the feeling that they seem to have more time on their hands. Hmm. Moving on. The next thing that they released was a picture. The picture is of a SWAT or paramilitary guy, and it looks like he's holding some variant of a scar. Thanks to the community, we kind of get a better look at what's actually in the picture. But the community is still unsure as to what variants some of these are. They think that it's either the FN scar H or L. Most suggested that it was the L though. It looks like it has an EOTech MPO3, but upon further inspection, it looks a little different. I also looked around online to see if I could find this particular variant but I could not seem to find it and I'm starting to think that this was changed a little bit just for legal reasons, but I could be wrong. If you guys find a version of this, then uh, just let me know in the comments. Looks like it has a vertical grip. There seems to be some sort of laser pointer on the on the end there, a muzzle flash hinder, and some have also said that there's a flashlight, but they're unsure if that's actually there. And that's basically all the news I got for you. The last thing that I want to say, the Ready or Not Community Podcast is now on YouTube. Link in the description. If you're a person that wants to ask a question on the Reddit, be sure to read the FAQ because who knows maybe it has the answer link in the description all right boys and girls let's move on to the reddit all right so the first one we're going to be starting out with is if you could pick which composers would compose the ron soundtrack who would you choose my pick would probably be Scott Tobin. He composed the soundtracks for games like project reality squad postscriptum etc and then he posts two links <laughs> And the developer replies with, 
Oh, this is actually Dan Liston that's replying. That's interesting. I didn't even know he was on here. Those of you who don't know who Dan Liston is, he is the current known composer that was recently acquired by Void Interactive because the previous one had leaked images and was uh, terminated. Those images that I just mentioned are dated by this point, so yeah. He says, Jesper Kidd's work is going to be a big influence on the score for sure. I absolutely loved his work on Hitman 2 through 4 growing up, and I feel like the dark orchestral style translates to Ready or Not's overall aesthetic. Some of the responses here, I believe he's referring to the responses in the chat, in general, are fantastic and get me rather nervous. But I'm a big fan of, I'm gonna butcher a lot of these names, Kid, Hotline Miami, and Perturbator, Carpenter, Brut, Bach, John Carpenter, it's either Johan or Johan, Johannesson? I don't know how to say their names, I'm sorry, sorry for butchered those, etc. What I will say is that I'm aiming in general for an orchestral synth hybrid, so it definitely won't be synth heavy as Hotline Miami, but perhaps more synthy than the older Hitman games, perhaps a Mass Effect type hybrid. Pretty cool, but less cinematic to suit the tactical style shooter of the game over an RPG, where the music plays a much more forward role. I absolutely love listening to the soundtracks like Mass Effect and Ori and the Blind Forest. However, gorgeous abode lines and lush string arrangements aren't the first thing I imagine when breaching doors and saving hostages. They'll have their place, but it'll be piecemeal. Overall, the biggest influences will likely be, again, I'm going to butcher these names, Johansson, Goldsmith, and Kid. You know, honestly, I would get some of the tracks that these guys would play, but I'm sure all of these are copyrighted, so I'm just not going to, you know, I'm not going to do that. That's pretty interesting. I didn't even know uh, Dan Liston was actually on here, but that's some pretty big insight right there on what the soundtrack is going to be like. All right, let's move on. Up next, we have will tone of voice regarding get down, hands up, etc. change depending on whether they are obviously a suspect or an unarmed civilian. I was just curious as the idea of viciously shouting at a human trafficking victim like seen in the reveal trailer to get down seems strange to me. Edit. I know there are different recordings of specific lines depending on whether SWAT is going on quiet or loud. Some lines are hushed. The others are loud and clear. At least that's what I've seen from some other source here on the subreddit. Could the same be done for different tones of voice? And the developer replies with, We have different lines for each type. Suspect, civilian, and child. The actual tone of the delivery is only different with children though. Interesting. Alright, let's move on. Up next we have... How will saving progress work in Ron? Let's say I'm in the middle of a mission and something unexpected happens and I have to turn off my PC. Will I have to replay that mission all the way from the beginning or can I continue from where I left off? And the developer replies with, you'll have to replay the mission. It mitigate a lot of the challenge if we were to do a traditional save system like that. So yeah, this isn't the type of game that you can just, you know, do a quick save. Like it doesn't have like that kind of progression. It's doing the swap four model, which if anybody doesn't know, it's, it's basically you just play a mission and in order for you to complete it, you have to have a specific score and you can't go on to the next mission unless you have that specific score. So you have to keep replaying that mission. And I'm hoping if that happens, AIs are basically going to spawn in different areas. So yeah. Yeah. All right, let's move on. The next one says, reporting to talk. Will we need to report everything to talk like in Swap 4? So this comment section was pretty interesting and I might just make a discussion video about it. But basically it all came down to the developer saying, this is how it works in Ron. All right, let's move on. Up next we have, I just wanted to say how awesome this pick is and the vibe it gives is sensational. I cannot wait to play the campaign for Ron. Yeah, me neither. And it just shows off the pick from Instagram and let's see what the developer has to say. Thank you. Hmm. All right, let's move on. Up next we have, what if the gameplay trailer is already done, but they like torturing us and watching us suffer. But on a serious note, maybe it is actually done, and they're just giving themselves time to develop the game further before launching the trailer along with pre-orders, and a beta if they plan on doing that at all. Or are they trying to basically finish the game to release the trailer? Maybe they want to confirm release date to launch with the trailer, but they did say the cash infusion from pre-orders would help boost production of the game, so I don't know. What are your thoughts on the status of the trailer? Wild speculation, absolutely encouraged. So the comments talk about how Easy Street stops working on the Swap 4 SEF mod because he gets hired over at Void Interactive to help them make their game. But according to this comment, he points out that Easy Street started working on it more frequently and they speculate that they have to be getting close to completion. And Easy Street replies with, Void Interactive wants to know your location. In all seriousness, it's because I like to finish the mod before the game so that the two aren't competing. Plus, I reckon with V7 complete, it gives us a subtle marketing boost. Especially if the SEF were to get number 10 on the mod of the year again, or maybe higher this time around. And Grunter replies to that saying, 
Ease is a man of many talents. Sometimes I think he may possess 18 arms like Durga. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but uh, let's move on. Up next we have some suggestions for the future implementations. Look, I want to start out by saying that no programmer or game designer likes people to tell them what they should do. As a student game designer and a fan of artistic projects, I can easily get annoyed by people who try to push their vision. I don't mean to do that at all here, but watching your game development has made me really passionate about a couple of details. One thing I feel your team really, really has to nail in order to maintain the atmosphere in your trailers is the sound design. What annoys me about many shooters released recently is that they have bland music and the enemies just drop dead with a oomph. In reality, it's not pleasant to think about, but I've spent a great deal of my life around veterans and their stories definitely don't sound like anything out of a Call of Duty. I'm sure you guys are way ahead of me here, but I thought I would throw my two cents. Please keep up the good work. Take my money. And Dan Liston coming in with another comment. Let's see what he says. I'm definitely working at the music not being bland, but it's a balancing act. Can't constantly have everything going on because that'll easily distract the player from the game of its nature. And of course the art always boils down to taste. I'd imagine half the audience would find Stravinsky's Ride of Spring to be bland or boring to them, whereas others would recognize it as a landmark piece and praise its influence. Either way, Way, the aim is to explore different musical textures to support the different levels rather than to have a synth pad create a haunting background. Then interchangeable DMB combat sections kick in every level. One of the heads of development has been quite adamant on getting haunting screams which I think is fantastic. More easily said than done, but I'd say we already have a few and will only be getting more. Through my other duties in administrating the voice acting, I've been specifically requesting it of a few of the actors. I think when you've view one of those screams on YouTube and the like, then there are factors at play, i.e. clipping, distortion on the recording, say a cop screaming into radio, and also a high uncharacteristic yell, like a man screaming or something that doesn't match their voice. And us as an audience watching the video and knowing that it's real adds to that. It'll be harder to capture with the video game because whoever's playing knows full well that they're absorbed in fiction. But there's no way we're skimping on getting some harrowing yells, screams, and cries. Woo-hoo-hoo-wee! Damn, Dan, listen, you're, you're... Man, the way... Oof, oh boy. I'm glad Void brought you on board. You sound like you really want it. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one says, In light of the awful World War III game servers, those of you that don't know what World War III is, it's a game that had a very awful launch, but... It had very good marketing. But anyways, how will the devs ensure that the servers on launch day are stable and ready for a major player base? I could see the announcement of a new tactical game draw mass attention, and I'm afraid the multiplayer servers will take a hit. And somebody just says, dedicated servers. And the developer replies with, Deddy is king. We'll be hosting our own, ideally stable servers as well. Yeah, dedicated servers is always the way. I just really hope that they're stable on release, because, uh... I don't like unstable servers, I'll be honest. Alright, moving on. Up next we have trailers already in the making, but the OST for Waltz and Bashir would be amazing for future fan trailers. Take a listen. Almost all of these are by composer Max Richter. Fucking incredible dude. And then he shows a bunch of music which I probably shouldn't play here because I'm sure all of these are copyrighted. Really love the taxi and APAC. Second link. It's nice and unsettling at the start with that shepherd tone, then just explodes into a fast synth and the developer applies with seal of approval. All right, I'm going to put the links in the description and we'll move on to the next one, which says, just a dumb question. After the release, will we have updates that add new guns? And if so, what are the intervals? Now, this is a question that was already answered by the FAQ, but the one thing that isn't answered is the fact that they don't know how frequently it's going to be. And the developer replies with, hopefully frequently. All right, moving on. Up next, we have something I noticed in the first trailer that's got me thinking a lot. In the Ready or Not Revealed trailer, I noticed that 28 seconds, when he's using Using the battery ram to knock open the door, when he's bringing his arms back to gain momentum, the battery ram knocks into the officer's riot shield behind him and it actually reacts to it by getting pushed a bit, which also causes the officer's arm to sway a bit. Was this done in game? If so, is this something that will naturally happen? As in player models actually reacting to objects and things that would impact them in any way? Which in this case was the battering ram? So for instance, if debris flies and hits an officer, will his body actually react to the impact or will it just fly through? And the developer replies with, that's a pre-animated scene, but who knows what the future holds. Ooh. And then somebody replies to that saying, totally accurate Battlegrounds pulled this off perfectly, in my opinion. A game that looks like this 
somehow pulls off what, uh, you know, AAA developers can't even do. This is just mind boggling. And the developer replies to that saying, a ton of work, but more than likely worth it. That looks really good. It just boggles my mind that <laughs> that looks better than most games that I've seen. All right, well, let's move on to the next one. Up next we have Meme Theory. What if Void Interactive is holding back the trailer to help us boost our creativity and create more memes for them? Or even worse, Void is not a real gaming company. There is no game. It's an evil plan to seek more memes to then sell around the Instagram pages. They want us to create memes for them without us knowing. And when they say more people join the team, they mean those making the best memes were hired and are all working for Void, which in reality is a name holder for a larger multi national edit void is actually working for a huge super secret multinational that is actually owned by a group of governments working together they want our memes they want them now this is like some alex jones shit so this was originally going to be in the meme section but uh the developer actually said something that wasn't meme related but before we get to the dev he's actually replying to a comment that's already here so i'm gonna go ahead and read that honestly i think there's some trouble within the void studio and i think it should be a big concern to all of us last time i made a post about how we should allow and give each to the void team to develop the trailer and game as they've not even taken a single penny from us yet but from a one month delay to two month delay to three month delay and now entering four month delay this of course is going to raise concern within the community one of their devs then put a semi explanation explaining the reason as to why the trailer has been delayed it's because the void team has been flying around the world meeting and greeting with other companies for investment info and such Yet, this doesn't make any sense to me because the Void team, way before this announcement, already claimed to have a sourced investor months ago before their need to go and start meeting with other companies. So I am just concerned as to why you would want to get other companies involved within the production of your game when you have already sourced an investor to aid your development, especially since getting more companies involved already with an investor in place would result in less profit overall for the team as capital would be split up. One of their investors replied to a curious fan in an email exclaiming that they meant to get the trailer out later in September. Keep in mind, getting the trailer out would also mean the team would be accepting pre-orders for the game. So I'm just curious as to why the investor would continue to allow the Void team to stall with the trailer release and not be shown any signs of an ROI if Void won't even put out the trailer yet and give out pre-orders. This has turned from a one month delay to two month delay, three month delay, and four month delay. All for a trailer. A trailer which only highlight some of the gameplay features and may not actually be representative of the actual product. If the Void team has to delay the release of a trailer by four months, guys, I could only imagine how long it will take for the actual game to be released. Nevertheless, I'm praying for the Void team and, and wishing them the best success on their journey. Wow, this guy, uh... Yeah, alright, let's see what the dev has to say. Honestly, after the initial announcement, my primary concern was when we do finally get to pre-orders, people aren't going to have faith in the team because of these delays. I've touched on this before, but it's mostly just being overzealous with estimates and having a very high quality standard. Information regarding investors isn't something I'm going to touch on in depth, but it's not something I'm concerned about. Our meetings with these people gave us valuable insight and some really useful connections, and it makes sense to want to look at these offers when they present themselves. To say there's trouble with Void Studio is a huge reach though. I get that it may appear that way from us, not following up on dates, but ultimately it's the nature of the beast. We're releasing our first title and we want it to be as perfect as possible. Hmm, you know the first guy had a lot of points that the dev didn't exactly answer and um, I find it very interesting and concerning at the same time. Hmm. All right, let's move on. The next one says, what's going on with this game? I've been super excited for it, followed it for a few months and stopped when there was no new news. Any current updates? And the developer replies with, we're just hunkered down, focusing, even me, believe it or not. And that's all he's got to say on that one. Let's move on to the next one. Next we have disappointment. Holy fuck, it's been three goddamn months. No more than three, you said. All the shitty, terrible memes and suggestions posted in the subreddit from lonely internet users looking for validation. Who doesn't understand a goddamn thing about game design? throwing their shitty ideas out like a blind dick in space, aimlessly thrusting at every direction. More games are coming out. Do you know that? Genuinely good games that we have seen and will play soon enough. Literally nobody else is about to pre-order this vaporware game other than the Reddit and Discord circle jerk. And even then, because normal people will be busy with those tangible games, I'm disappointed. 
and I haven't even seen the goddamn gameplay yet. These things take time, blah, 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 whatever. It's been two whole years since the announcement. You say you have talented people, high-end technology for animation, group reformation and expansion. Where is the proof of that? I have $5 billion stored in my offshore bank account. That statement is as real as anything you people have ever said about your game. Prove that your game is real. You know, what's interesting about this post is that the moment that he posted this, he deleted his 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 account you know if you're gonna make a statement like this you can't just bitch out you know you should stick by what you say and not run for the hills well that's all i got to really say about that one basically in the comment section a lot of people are saying that their evidence is that easy street was hired and if he wasn't hired he would have more time to work on the version 7 of the sef swap 4 mod so obviously he's working on something else hire this man <laughs> I also have another piece of evidence. Um, I was actually there before the um, clip went public, and he was the one that actually gave us the clip. Uh, if anybody remembers that recent clip, yeah, so he is a part of that team. So basically, the next couple of posts are when people are actually starting to dig into their pasts. So just fair warning. Up next, we have previous artwork from devs, and it has two links that actually link to the actual pages of what they work as. And the first one is a Sterling, which is actually Grunter. I can actually see his face from here, but I'm going to blur it out for uh, obvious reasons. Oh my God, no! But yeah, it seems like he's had a lot of previous work that he's done, and uh, I really like what I'm looking at here. And then there's another guy that it seems to have worked on a lot of guns. Um, his name is Chili Dog 3D. And I control this guy because I'm pretty sure that's not his picture. Royans replies with, I am a programmer. Chili Dog 3D is an artist. Moving on, the next one says, Interesting find on voidinteractive.net. It's team one and it's a picture of some guy. And I don't know if this is a guy that's a part of the team or what and then it shows another guy. It shows two pictures of some random guys. They look like stock photos. They don't look like, um, you know, what, what what one of the devs would look like, but maybe it is, so I don't know if I should really blur it out or not. If I blur it out, then, uh, you know. And then he continues with saying, weird inaccessible web pages on their website that are numbered 1 through 8. Interesting. And the developer replies with, these are just some sample pages from a template we used. They're not actually people working at our company. Yeah, I thought so. Am I going to start getting locks of your hair in my mail? Because they're basically, <laughs> they're basically trying to, like, hunt down the uh, developers at this point in time later on in the comments somebody asks hey did you used to work at heat blur what kind of people are you is this a game masons what the hell is heat blur and game masons well heat blur looks like a like it looks like jet simulations and um game mason looks like some kind of mobile maker a mobile company maker or some shit and the developer replies with yeah i did work for heat blur for their f14 and some earlier pre heat blur models too so this actually makes a lot of sense and explains some of the pictures that are on the profile page that we saw just in the previous post um he has a couple of pictures of jets and a pilot and uh, a little bit of models after that. Yeah, this is all pretty cool, actually. Game Masons. Who keeps Atlantis off the map? Who keeps the deadlines under wraps? We do. We do. And then this guy watched a lot of The Simpsons when he was growing up. Because he always references back to that show, so... Maybe. All right, moving on. The next one reads, what's your motivation to keep going? I've been following this game for a while now and seeing dead responses to posts with the exact same amount of determination and persistence as you did originally, it really shows how motivated and dedicated you guys are to this game, which is fucking awesome. It really is. But how do you manage to keep on through the hard times? As I imagine there have been some. And the developer replies with many factors, some due to the community and the fact that it hasn't been diminished through two years of minimal updates and a lot due to the game and how it feels when playing. The time spent on the game also helps. It's like a snowball effect. The longer you spend moving along, the greater your motivation becomes. But we can also sort of see where the game is headed, and that presents motivation like no other, I think. Wow, interesting. All right, that's all he's got to say, so let's move on. The next one we have, don't really know how to phrase this without sounding psychopathic, lol, but a suggestion since the dogs were confirmed. I don't really hope for this because they're good boys, but if there's actually going to be a setting where dogs are shootable and not your friends such as attack dogs, still good boys deep down, they should make this aspect more realistic and fucked up. Than 
than other games, just like what they're doing with the rest. One of the saddest vids I saw from a police dash cam of a man with a knife cornered by police. The canine handler let his dog loose to try and bring the knife guy down, but the knife dude moved forward and his dog reached him. So the cops opened fire and accidentally killed the dog too. Games try to make killing less easy. They'll give NPCs masks to make them less human, and dogs plop onto the ground noisily and with zero suffering when shot in the leg a couple times. And he has a link, and I don't know if I'm gonna... Oh, it's a picture to... It's actually a video to video game Donkey. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what to make it funny. I don't know shooting a dog and ready or not and having him audibly mainly visually Suffer until dying will definitely be unexpected if dev really wanted to fuck with our feelings This is a good way and the developer applies with just note We never confirmed dogs as a police sided thing. They are not canine units just regular animals. More than likely alert systems right now, chained up, etc. Convincing animal AI that the player can interact with increases the scope a lot. However, it's not off the books. I mean, yeah, that would have, I mean, a while ago I had asked this question if they had animals in the game and they confirmed that they had dogs and um, we all assumed that it was just canines and we, we were actually wrong uh, when he came out and said that no, these are just like set pieces, like a dog is chained up and he just starts barking at you. So yeah. All right, so let's move on. The next one reads as follows. Are you able to play as the bad guys? Are you able to play as the terrorists or kidnappers? And the developer replies with, In PvP, you could play as symmetrical gameplay focused suspects, but there won't be any way of playing the suspects in the single player or cooperative. Okay, cool. And then somebody else replies with, So basically professional funded and well equipped kind of suspects, I'm sold. And the developer replies with, In later missions, yes. In PvP, I'm not quite sure how to phrase this, but will your team look like the SWAT team? but to the other team you will look like the op 4 and they will look like SWAT does that make sense and the developer replies with traditional style one team is suspect and one team is SWAT okay got that cleared up all right let's move on the next one says negotiators can negotiators be used to convince suspects to peacefully surrender if I'm doing a hostage situation where there are only one to two suspects it will be nice to use negotiations to make them come out without having to fire a shot and the developer replies with Right now, negotiators don't have an effect on suspects. However, we'd like to buff out a lot of the personnel selection to give players a broader variety of choices when handling a mission. Who knows? Interesting. All right, let's move on. The next one reads as follows. Game currency? Hey, any info? I looked at the FAQ, but couldn't find more info. I read about purchasing the ballistic shield at the beginning of the mission. So may I suppose the game will have currency? Can you give us more details about it? If so, will we have a bank for a whole career? Do we expect a Counter-Strike style store? And the developer replies with, no currency, points. Points are spent on items and are refreshed each time you load into the pre-planning phase. Eventually, the plan is to have a team rank which contributes to the amount of points your unit can spend. Interesting. Somebody replies to that saying, just curious, are there hard limits to how much of the items you can buy? Like if in co-op single player we wanted three people to be shield bearers, would that be possible with enough points? Like this? And the developer replies with, yes, most items can only be bought once or maybe twice. Interesting. All right, let's move on. The next one was actually made by me. We got one. And that was when I posted the uh, little mini clip to Reddit. I think I was like the first one to do it. But somebody in the comments says, if this is the trailer, Gunter is dead. And the developer replies with busted. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on. The next one reads as follows. A free look settings and ground branch. And yeah, he's just basically showing off Ground Branch's- uh, Oh, shout out to Ground Branch, by the way. He's just showing off the free look that's in Ground Branch, and I don't even know that you could actually fling your gun around like that. How the hell do you do that? I need to figure that out. Alright, moving on. Alright, let's see what the developer has to say. Damn, this game is cool. Alright, well, let's move on to the next one. Up next we have, regarding game AI, I've recently been playing Ground Branch, and their AI was actually challenging to fight against. Another shout out to Ground Branch. Hey. Turns out their AI developer, Phil Edwards, is a founding member of the AI game programmer guild. What? He's made a lot of YouTube videos regarding the status of innovation of AI in the game industry and how it's been stagnant since the tactical shooters of the early 2000s. While no doubt this game is going to have a great challenge AI, as we've seen from clips in the Void Interactive YouTube channel, I was still wondering about how exactly you guys are doing it. Unreal Engine doesn't have a very sophisticated AI coding suit, so are you guys using a third-party programming tool to make it? Wow, I did not know that about Ground Branch. How interesting. And the developer replies with, Unreal Engine 
Engine's default AI tools are a huge pain. It's really good to see that there are others out there trying to push the bar. AI and AAA especially has stagnated over the last decade. Alright, well, that was interesting. Let's move on to the next one. The next one says character model. And then it just shows a picture that was leaked by... I'm not sure if it was leaked by this person or a different person, but uh, yeah, it's showing this off. But let's see what the dev has to say about that. Somebody in the comments says, As a novice 3D modeler myself, did they remodel it using ZBrush after scanning the real life counterparts? This is great. And the developer replies with, Mix of scan data and regular sculpting. Can't beat scanning though. Very interesting. Man, I really hope that they release like a behind the scenes sort of deal. That would actually be cool them trying to, you know, actually see all the stuff that they're doing. I would love that. But anyways, let's move on. The next one reads, The entire gaming industry seems to be in a PR shock. I wish you good luck, Void. First, Battlefield 5's terrible announcement, then Diablo 4 being a mobile after years of fans waiting, and now a ton of people are quitting Rainbow Six Siege after the censorship fiasco. On top of that, not a lot of recent games have released that haven't been huge disappointments. I know there's probably not much to worry about with Ready or Not from the dev's perspective, but I just want to share the fact that there's probably a lot of people with ridiculously high expectations for this game, and staying connected with the players is very important. Later in the comments, somebody says, um, actually, this is a really great opportunity. The industry has been getting lower and lower for a long time now, and the customers are catching up. Now this is a perfect time for any decent developer to shine through this countless shit. So basically in the comments, they talk about this is actually a good time for the developers to actually put out a game like this because the industry has just been going to shit. Like, almost every AAA company has microtransactions, the games that they give to you aren't even finished, or they're broken, or they put the content behind paywalls. So right now would just basically be like a shine of light in all of this darkness, you know? This is like going back to the golden age of when games actually released finished with good content and hopefully working on release. And the developer replies with, it's a good reason as to why we're taking our time. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one says, I've suggested this before, but the FPS was terrible at the time. Would it be cool if we could peek over our magnified sights for a close range shooting? Arma 3 RHS mod. And then it shows a gif of a guy that's aiming and then he shoots and then he looks above the weapon to shoot. This is actually a pretty good tactic because you want to see where you're looking before you decide to look over and shoot. Because basically what you're seeing is all, only what's in that eye hole. And I think that's actually pretty cool, but let's see what the devs say. And the developer replies with, always love this feature in Arma. Ooh. Are we gonna see it, Mr. Developer Man? Next one reads, Do we know the meaning of the red dots already? And it shows a picture of the uh, mini clip, and it shows, like, really tiny dots in the background, which I didn't actually notice at first. And the developer replies with, There are some cranes in the distance that have lights on them. Compression just nukes the scene. All right, interesting. Let's move on. The next one reads as follows, Hey, old devs. Whenever we post a trailer to other subs, people complain that it's all cutscenes or pre-rendered frame dumps. They crank the engine settings to 11. Render a few frames and stitch it back together at 60 FPS. What parts can you say are completely unmodified gameplay, aside from the awesome little clips that you guys have released over the months? And the developer replies with, anything in first person in the first trailer, except for the multiplayer scene. However, the game doesn't look like that anymore. Looks better. I guess you guys don't have a frame of reference yet. Can't wait to see what it looks like. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Up next we have, wedges and optimization? Hey, I have two questions. One, are there going to be deployable wedges to block doors? Two, what does the optimization look like at its current state? Because since it's on the UE4, I really don't want an optimization disaster like the one for Insurgency Sandstorm to happen a second time. Thanks. And the developer replies with, The door wedge is indeed in the game. As we can see from the gift that's on the front page of the website. We're working hard to make sure this game runs as smoothly as it can, since a lot of it is indoors. This becomes a lot easier than optimizing for a huge open world like Insurgency. Yeah, I mean, because the areas are more condensed, it shouldn't be too hard to make the optimization you know better but you know every game needs optimization you know what i mean honestly i think the best unreal 4 game that i've played that's a shooter would probably be between hell let loose and gears of war every other unreal 4 engine game that i've played has really ran like shit. But anyways, let's move on to the next one. Up next we have suppressors. Couldn't find it anywhere on the FAQ. Sorry if it has been answered, but will suppressors reduce the damage of the gun like other games do? And the developer applies with, Supp suppressors increase the muzzle velocity of the weapon you attach it to. It'll suppress the gun's fire, but the real takeaway is the lack of the flash, which will ultimately lead to it working better with nods. Somebody else replies to that saying, any choice of supersonic rounds? And the developer replies with, not currently. Hmm. 
how interesting, Mr. Developer Man. Later in the comments, somebody says, Depending on the gun, the suppressor shouldn't actually make firing quiet 556 because the supersonic crack is still there. Will this be represented in the game? And the developer applies with, yes. Hmm. Alright, let's move on. The next one says, Handcuffing down suspects? If a suspect is handicapped or dead, can they be handcuffed or do we just report them and move on? At least in America, police officers handcuff all suspects, unresponsive or not, because police can't actually declare someone is dead unless it's obvious, decapitation, etc. And the developer replies with, For now, handcuffing is limited to conscious individuals. It's something to explore in the future, though. Interesting. Can't wait to see that update. All right, let's move on. Up next we have, since Ron will be on Steam, what serious and Easter egg-ish she bit would you add? We gotta get all the memes from the sub into the game somehow. And the developer replies with, oh, we have a few. Ooh, I wonder what they are. And that's it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. The next one reads, I might have something worth looking into. Holy shit, this is long. So I really don't want to read all of this. I'll post a link in the description if you're interested, but basically what happens is that he goes off the deep end with, uh, looking for things that relate to Carcosa, but ultimately he is unsure if any of it is relevant to the conversation. And the developer replies with, two slashes. I comment underneath him, I say, is the soon window closing? And then I put the soon that's in between the two slashes, equal sign, and then slashes again, just to emphasize to see if that, uh, you know, had anything to do with that. Oh, look at the time. It's past 30 minutes and I still have a lot to go on the Reddit. I also wanted to do some memes at the end of the video, but unfortunately it's just way too long of a video. So I think I might just do like a dedicated video to the memes and just uh, post that, but I really have to like uh, dig in. I'm only going to get the ones that have dev responses because I don't want to, you know, do every single meme because that would just take forever. So I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.